In my line of work, presenting the highest quality image is key. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Use the offer code CARL to get a 10% discount. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. So, two years ago, I purchased this Wacom Cintiq tablet monitor, and uh, I did promise that I was going to give a bit of an overview once I'd had uh, some time to use it so sorry for the delay but I'm going to do that today because um, I've actually gone back to using an ISO monitor instead of this Wacom Cintiq and I'm going to explain my reasons for doing so. Now before we kick off uh, again just to make things fair I've just calibrated the Wacom Cintiq with the calibrator uh, that it comes with. You have to attach the calibrator to the screen and then it does its calibration process. And I've just calibrated the ISO which has its own built-in calibrator that pops down and it does the calibration process automatically for you. Um, I think it's every couple of hundred hours of use so you don't even have to worry about the calibration. So um, now before I go over the reasons about why I've gone from the Cintiq back to the ISO and a Wacom tablet. So don't forget this is a Wacom screen or Wacom however you want to pronounce it uh, and this is a Wacom tablet. This is the um, Intuos uh, medium sized tablet that I use with uh, my ISO monitor and obviously with the Wacom Cintiq it's the tablet itself. So uh, before I go back to explaining the reasons why I've gone back to the ISO, let, let, let me just give you a little bit of an overview of some of the, the, the things and main uh, features and, and issues. So this is a 27-inch monitor, 27 inches from here to here. This particular ISO is a 31-inch monitor, and they both do different sizes. I think they do a 24-inch monitor. These guys do a 24, 27, and, and, and other sizes as well. So, uh, in, in actual physical screen area, this one is slightly bigger than that one. The downside of the Wacken Cintiq is that it has this larger border area around it, I guess, for all the processing for the tablet functions, etc., etc. And it also comes on this hefty great big stand that allows you to lock the monitor in a vertical position, which is quite nice, so that if you want to work standing up, which a lot of artists do when they're doing uh, work on these uh, Cintiqs. You can position it uh, standing up, you can position it uh, really flat low down to the ground like this if you want to work uh, over the top of the screen. Uh, so you can use it quite versatile in, in many ways, which makes sense because it's a tablet, so therefore you want to find the most, uh, you know, the best resting position for, for your hand, etc., as you're working. And you can also then set it into a position uh, such as this, uh, like a normal screen. It also has a touch sensitive function, so it operates a little bit like an iPad where you can swipe and, and, and sweep around. And um, that works pretty well, but to be honest, I found that a bit of a gimmick and I never really got into using it that way. Uh, it also comes with, with a separate little tool that you attach which you can program and function for some of your shortcut commands in the same way that the Wacom has with the buttons, programmable buttons and the zoom feature etc here. Uh, and again, I don't really use those very often either and I never ended up using the, 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 the uh, device that you attach to the screen that you could then detach and use as well. I'm sure some artists or, uh, you know, uh, animators, people that you know, use it for that sort of thing may find that useful. Um, this is very heavy, okay? It has to be heavy because of the big stand needed to lock it into different positions. So uh, it's understandable why it is so heavy, uh, but it does make it difficult to move around, pick it up, uh, it's, it's quite a weight. Saying that, the ISO is obviously no small beast. It does have the hood, which sort of magnetic strips 
clip onto the side, or I think that I'm not even sure they're magnetic, but they somehow clip on. But it's not, you know, too heavy. You can obviously, oops, you can obviously lift it up and down as you like. Uh, angle, the tilt, the rotation, everything else. Um, so it's all, it's all fairly, uh, fairly good for that sort of thing as well. Uh, and clearly a lot lighter in weight than the Cintiq. Now the Cintiq, as it is a tablet, obviously comes with its own pen uh, for the retouching. And with my ISO, obviously uh, the tablet that I use separately, which you obviously have to purchase separately, that comes with uh, its pen as well. Now for this demonstration to show you or try to explain the clear differences about why I've gone back to the ISO, I've got a duplicate of each image. It's exactly the same file but I've had to create one file to open on that screen and one file to open on that screen uh, and then we can look at the comparisons. Now um, the first thing that I should also mention as well is that this is not a 4K monitor, this is a 4K monitor. Since I purchased this particular Cintiq, they have now bought out a 4K version, which will obviously give a sharper, uh, more uh, definition, if you like, in the image. But I don't think that will resolve my key bug, if you like, my key problem with using that compared to uh, using the ISO. Both, uh, and I'll come to that in a minute, both of these monitors are meant to be colour accurate, although I would say uh, the ISO is considerably better in terms of the colour reproduction and the tonal, the silkiness of the images uh, compared to the Wacom. In terms of price, the Wacom Cintiq cost, uh, I think it was about maybe $2,500, let me just refer to my notes. The ISO, this is the CG318, cost about, um, about $4,000, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, this, as I said, has now been upgraded. There's a 4K version, and the 4K version of this, which is the 27-inch QHD, is $3,300 currently. Uh, this one has also been updated now to the CG319X, apparently, which is still a 4K monitor. Uh, there's meant to be a few improvements on it, and it's got a slightly higher level of um, pixels per inch, but it is extremely expensive. I think it's running at about $5,700 for the new 31-inch version, which is about £4,300. I think, as I said, this was around 3,000 something pounds when I purchased this CG318 um, not too uh, long ago. Now, um, what are the reasons? We, we obviously need color calibrated monitors as photographers, professional photographers, especially where uh, we're producing color uh, accurate work where for fine art printing, for magazines, for our clients, we have to be absolutely sure on the color. And when we're doing our retouching work, we need to make sure that our burn, dodge, saturation, uh, luminance, all those adjustments we're making, uh, we can clearly see what we're doing and clearly make sure we're making the right decisions. Okay, so let's come to the key reasons. Now, it, it may be difficult for you guys to see from the camera here, from the video camera operator point of view, compared to what I can see, uh, but I can tell you clearly that this picture is considerably better than this picture. This picture is very good, but this one is considerably better. One of the key things that uh, I noticed in using the Wacom Cintiq was simply that the actual surface screen, so there's kind of like there's a screen behind a uh, surface here. There's a surface over the top of this screen which allows the uh, tablet to work so that it can you know follow you around because this screen over the top must be linked somehow to uh, identifying or detecting where your pen is. Now that surface over the top of the screen I feel uh, degrades the quality of the image below somewhat. Now obviously on the ISO we don't have that, we actually have the actual screen and it is a 4K screen so the detail is far superior 
But beyond that, there's something else about it. There's the transitional value of the tones, the colors, the saturation, the feeling of the image is just superior on the ISO monitor compared to the Wacom. Now, incidentally, as the ISO monitor is quite an expensive color accurate device, uh, we may well be doing a comparison with the ISO to another brand, I think it's called Asus. Someone was said they were gonna send us the Asus screen to do a comparison between the two, but we haven't received that yet. Anyway, back to uh, usability on this. So we, we do have a good picture. It's not quite as saturated or as warm as the, WAC, as the ISO, even though it has just been calibrated. And when I'm doing my uh, burning and dodging, for example, so let me just get, um, let me just get my uh, layers up. So go to brush tool. Now, uh, so you can see here, I'm left-handed. I can use the, uh, the, the pen tool in combination with my keyboard, just my brush side, brush size. And let's say for instance, I wanted to uh, do some burning work. So that means I'm going to darken in uh, certain areas of the image. So let me just say here, I'm just gonna do a bit of burning and burning on this side of the face, just darkening up those shadows a little bit. So you can see, I can actually just see exactly, let's say I wanna darken up the makeup, I can see exactly where I'm working on the image, no problem at all. I can see exactly where I wanna do my burn and dodge work, darken in that shadow. And then I can flick that layer on and off. This is obviously a little bit um, rudimental, but you can see there, that's just the, the burning work that I've just added a bit of shadow around the face there, as you can see there, which is absolutely fine. So I can see where I'm going. One of the problems with it though, I find as, as when, uh, from a retouching point of view is that although you can see where your retouching is, your hand is sometimes in the way of where you're working as well. So you have the advantage of being able to clearly see where you are retouching, but the disadvantage of you cannot see the image underneath where your hand is. And visually, I actually find it perceptually better to see the whole image because when you're making a tonal adjustment or a burn and dodge adjustment to one part of the image, how much you should apply to that is relative to the whole image. It's the perceptual appearance of the whole image that's important. So having your hand over part of the image is actually uh, a bit of a problem sometimes. Now we can zoom right in and all the usual stuff and the detail is still very good um, and the color is very good. But as I say, there's just this slight um, graininess, if you like, to the image. I think that's uh, part of the um, compromise of having this surface material over the top of the screen that allows it to detect the pen. So uh, from that, and after using the Wacom, I used this for about, I don't know, two or three months to do my retouching. Took a little while to get used to it. And I became accustomed to it, but I was never really, really happy with it for photography retouching. Now, don't get me wrong, I think some people may love it. And I certainly think that animators, uh, character designers, people maybe who are working in animation, painting characters and doing actual brush strokes such as painting uh, uh, scenes or animations etc they will find this very fluid way of working because it will be very similar to how they would work uh, sketching on a canvas uh, you know a drawing board etc that type of thing however for me as a retoucher the most important and the primary uh, requirement is the image quality and if i go back over to this particular monitor um, we hopefully let me get my mouse in here hopefully you can see the additional quality and level of detail that the ISO monitor has. I mean, it's the very fine details. One, obviously it's a 4K monitor, but I think it's beyond that. It's the overall tonal range, the transitions of the tones, um, the quality of the image on this ISO monitor is absolutely superb. 
This particular monitor is definitely the best monitor that I've ever used. I'd be very interested to see what the, um, the, the CG319X is like, um, but I think it's gonna be hard pushed to, to be much different um, to what I'm seeing on screen. So from a usability point of view, if we go into uh, this image, and I now add a couple of burn and dodge layers on this particular shot, and then I want to work on this one. So you can now see, let me just get onto the mask. We can now see that I'm using my Wacom tablet, which I can position anywhere. I can hold it on my lap if I want or wherever I want. One of the other great things about this is it fits in my laptop bag. So if I'm ever giving a presentation away, I can take the Wacom tablet with me and work with it plugged into another computer on location or my own laptop, etc., etc. Uh, so that adds an element of versatility. But in terms of uh, using, now you can see what I'm talking about, about being able to see the whole image. So my hand is no longer covering the screen and the picture that I'm seeing is of a higher quality than it was on the Wacom. Now that higher quality image means that I'm able to see my burn and dodge transitions far more clearly. So I'm already able to perceive these very, very small amounts of burn and dodge far more accurately than I was able to perceive it on the Wacom. In many ways, it actually took more burning, or sorry, more burning in on the Wacom for me to actually perceive it or to notice it, whereas I can notice far lesser amounts being applied here uh, in, in, in kind of almost more incremental uh, levels, far smaller levels. And that gives me a greater degree of control and a greater degree of accuracy. Um, so I guess you're basically applying your work or your retouching work with more finesse. Actually, that is the word. There is more finesse. This monitor allows me more finesse than the uh, Wacom Cintiq, I guess, was allowing me, especially for this type of retouching work. So if I go over to my uh, burn layer, we just flick it on and off there, you can see uh, what I've applied just with the uh, burning in on that image. Now, um, really to show this off to its best, I've also selected a few other images and hopefully from those images, we'll be able to perceive some of the different types of detail that I find important as a photographer. Okay, so I've just opened a, another image that I created, which is a product still life, quite a technical image, it uses technical drawing instruments. We've took a long time setting everything up here, but this is a great example of um, high level of detail. And if we zoom in on this one, the detail is just incredible. I mean, I can go in even further here. Uh, remember, this is from uh, a 100 megapixel uh, camera file, but the detail is absolutely pin sharp, the silkiness, the transition of the tones is superb. If I move over to the Wacom, the detail is also very good. One thing you will find with the Wacom though is the uh, viewing angle. So with the viewing angle, uh, what I mean by that is I can look at my eyes over quite large angles without much change to the image. But with the Wacom, you really do need to be quite front on to it to get the best viewing experience. Now the detail is still very good. Uh, remember that the ISO that I'm using is a 4K monitor. So given that it's 4K, it is of course going to look uh, sharper and clearer. And as I said before, the uh, Wacom do have a 4K version now available. However, as I also said before, I don't think that's the main issue. My main issue is just the overall screen, uh, screen quality, transitional tones, but also potentially this surface screen, which I think causes a little bit of graininess to the image. Okay, let's look at a different image file now uh, that may offer some other alternative um, perceptual uh, values. Okay, so I have the same image or copy of the image, exactly the same file, duplicated, open one on each screen. Uh, looking at the colors on that 
pretty good, but the skin colors look definitely better on this particular screen. Let's zoom in and take a look at some of the fine detail here now. So if I zoom right in onto the dress there, we got the very fine fabric, the rope. Um, let, let's just move over to the uh, Cintiq and explore the same areas. Um, we can see, yes, it does a good job. The detail is still good. It's just not quite as sharp as the um, ISO. But my biggest problem with it though, again, is the richness of the tones. That looks more accurate in terms of skin tones. The richness of the color in here, this looks more accurate. This still looks almost a little bit desaturated, unfortunately, on that particular image. Okay, now let's move on to another image. And this last image that we're gonna look at uh, is particularly interesting because it was shot at a high ISO. I think it was shot at 800 ISO. And given uh, 800 ISO, we will probably see some grain in there. And it will be interesting to see how this monitor handles the grain and the detail. So I'm gonna make her body about that size on this one and to about the same size on this one and let's take a look at both images. Now, there is definitely a softer image here. This is definitely softer on the detail around the eyes, um, around the, the back of the dress. And then when I move over to the ISO, the, the detail in the back of the dress here is much clearer, much, much sharper. And I can actually perceive the grain. Remember, this was shot at 800 ISO, but I can see the grain. Now, that, why is that important? Because that's very important because you need to know how grainy the image really is in case you want to treat that or you want to do anything on that. And on this one, because uh, partly because it's um, a uh, less uh, resolution monitor, it's harder to see that even with both images being displayed at the same time. Um, now, as I say, I'll give these guys a fair shot, they do do a 4K version, but I keep going back to the fact that I think part of the problem of the perception is this, uh, this protective screen over the top that's necessary, I believe, for the, uh, for the pen tool to operate. So, um, in, you know, in terms of that, that was one of the main reasons I went back to the ISO because I wanted the absolute best image quality. And whilst the Wacom was a nice idea in terms of using it for retouching, the hand blocks part of the picture, which doesn't happen. The advantages for me, one, the optimum, totally the best possible picture quality that I can arrive at, which is important. And of course, this is a Wacom anyway. This is the Wacom Intuos tablet that I use. This is far more portable. I can take this home with me. I can work anywhere in the world with this uh, and use it far more freely. Whereas this is a big, heavy monster to work with. So I think this has its um, uses for certain uh, types or certain parts of the industry. Uh, but for what I do, this is definitely my preferred solution. Now, hopefully, um, if we do receive that screen from Asus, um, we're going to do a comparison on a screen that's about half the price of the ISO and have it side by side. It's another 4K 31 inch monitor that is meant to be very color accurate. And we'll do a comparison of the ISO versus the Asus screen so that we can show you guys also a more affordable option for a color accurate monitor. But I've, I've yet to see it, yet to use it. So uh, hopefully we can give you a review on that in the near future. Thanks very much for watching. Mm.